This is Millspec Monkey, and we're here with Mike at CMMG. Obviously, we're here at TriggerCon 2024. I tell you what, since the last time you guys saw one of our videos on the Millspec Monkey channel, we've introduced the Descent. So it is probably one of our newest, hottest things. It covers a lot of things that kind of, it, it, it fills the gaps that the Banshee and Resolute and everything that you've seen previously didn't do. The whole premise behind the Descent was to have something that was going to be more of a compact action. Uh, you didn't necessarily need to have the buffer tube sticking off the back of it. So it's something we've been working on for a while. And when we started off, we were doing short rifles like this. So you can see like a, a 5.56, a 300 blackout, 9 miller, 9 millimeter, different variations and six and a half inch barrel pistols. Uh, we've added to them and the ability to actually be able to put a Picatinny rail on the back. You can run it just as a pistol like this or you can actually run it with a brace or something of that sort off the back if you want to SBR it. Uh, the nice thing or the heart behind the Descent itself is our compact ap action operating system. So with this, you're gonna see more of a dual guide rod type of system you're going to see that you're missing what would be traditionally more of the bolt carrier group. So this actually allows the entire system to operate inside the upper. And that, again, negates the need for the traditional buffer system off of the rear. So a multitude of calibers came out in the descent when we released it. And then we quickly realized that this type of operating system worked with a lot more calibers. We also figured it also works with longer barrels. Um, so we went from just straight small pistols to brace pistols and complete rifles, uh, including up to our newer guy here. So this is one of our newest variants. This is still a descent, uh, but this is one of our Mark threes. So this is a 308 configuration. Uh, so it takes 308 size magazines. We have this available in 308, 65 Creedmoor, and 86 Blackout. Uh, but this gives you the complete rifle configuration, which does have a telescoping style stock. It does have an adjustable cheek weld on it, and you can also get the side folding. And again, with it being the compact action, this completely operates with this folded or not. Um, we also have what basically is gonna look just like this, but with a standard AR magwell. Uh, so that allows you to have a lot more configurations in a rifle using standard AR size stuff. So 5.56, 300 blackout, 350 legend, six millimeter arc. I can keep going on, uh, <laughs> but you're getting a ton of configuration here. Uh, and with this though, like I said, that front side charger, it's a non-reciprocating front side charger. Uh, depending on the caliber, it is actually gonna be ambi capable uh, without any tools. Um, other cool thing about the descent is because of that compact action, we were able to bring to life something that we've been wanting to do for quite some time, which is initially more of a kind of a band proof style rifle. Um, we know there are a lot of people out there that want to enjoy their second amendment freedoms. And unfortunately they might be in a state that has some heavier restrictions. So we have our BR series on the descent. So we're still utilizing the same upper on the compact action, but we now have lowers that have a Remington 870 style stock on it. So if you have the removable box magazine that some states deem to be an evil feature, well, you no longer have the pistol grip or a telescoping and folding stock on it too. So 870 style stock, it gives you a nice rifle that's gonna be available in a lot more places. As of right now, we can get this in 47 states. Um, but the side feature is it also is a very comfortable ranch rifle feel. So it kind of gives you the ergonomics of a traditional rifle. It's like, hello there, old friend. Uh, but it has modern ergonomics, modern functionality to it also. Uh, the AR size magwell on the BR series is available in seven calibers, uh, including things like our nine millimeter conversion. So this is actually a magazine that goes in a standard AR lower that takes nine millimeter ammo. Um, and we've also stepped this up into the larger 308 size also. So uh, we've just found that the descent has kind of really fit a small spot in our market uh, that has grown into a very big spot in our market that just allows a multitude of options. Uh, I would say the BR is a platform that 
don't let its looks fool you. While you're going to look at it and think, that's not an AR. Once you get it in your hands, it shoots incredible. And that's not just me, Mike from CMMG, saying that. That's me, Mike, the gun enthusiast that likes to get out and shoot on the weekends, too. Uh, so I, truth be told, I wasn't sure what to think of this when we were initially releasing it. And I was very pleasantly surprised when I got out and shot it for the first time. I, I didn't know what to expect, but it was a very pleasant surprise. Uh, so that's a quick look at a lot of our Descent offerings. We have a ton of new stuff we're coming out with still also. Uh, we've got a lot of new magazines that we're releasing. Uh, so we have, one of the things people know us for is our 22 conversion kits. So our 22 kits you can put in a 5.56 magazine. All of our current magazines are gonna be shipping with the new guns. We have the nine millimeter conversion magazine that allows you to have 32 rounds of nine millimeter in a standard AR size magazine body. We have our newly designed 5.56 magazines. Uh, we've got our triggers and everything. Uh, this is one of the things that I'm happiest about. This is our zero drop-in trigger. This is available in all of our product offerings. It's a drop-in style trigger we worked with Rise Armament on. And it is just a, it, it's one of those triggers that you really have to get your hands on it to really appreciate how brilliantly simple and easy it is. I mean, I know it's a trigger. It's <laughs> typically going to be easy, but it just feels good. <laughs> so this be considered AR-15 drop-in? Yep. Oh. So yeah, you can put this in any of the stuff we've got. As long as you've got your standard AR-15 style pins, uh, you're going to be able to drop it right into there. And our BR series has a variant of that. So you still have the main housing up here, but then you're going to see linkage going back rearward toward the trigger. So it doesn't have the traditional trigger shoe or trigger bow coming down. It, it attaches to linkage going back. So we're still using that trigger in the BR series rifles too. Very interesting. And if you're up for it, going over some of the design theory on the Descent, where say, I got the MK47, which, which I think is really great, where I was pretty much looking for AK, shooting AK ammo, but in an AR-15 platform. It's, so I love that blend. So yeah, let me grab a Mark 47. So yeah, just as a, a confirmation, I mean, so I'm talking about the Mark 47. Uh, so this is one of our original Banshee variants, uh, you know, slightly modernized with some of our furniture. So you're seeing 762 by 39 in a mid-size platform. And this was designed from the ground up to shoot 762 by 39, but you're seeing it has the traditional buffer tube. And honestly, part of the, the design behind going to the descent over a traditional buffer tube system was the fact that we knew that there was just gonna be more options for the compact action. So not needing that buffer tube allowed us to finally realize the more bandproof style firearm in the BR-3 and the BR-4. Yeah, I guess uh, so looking at the end result, it looked like people wanted more AK style as far as right. it appears um, to be the, what happened. That, that's definitely a plus side. Let me actually grab one of those really quick. Um, so I didn't mind the buffer tube. Oh. You know, I, I've never minded the buffer tube either, uh, but but it's you like know, more the, the, people are into the folder action. Yep, so you get the folder action on this and you get a little bit more of the AK Purist just for the fact that you do have the side charger. That's one of the things that people have asked us for years to do on the Mark 47 Banshees and Resolutes and stuff. As they're like, put a side charger on it. Well, with the traditional style AR charging system, it just didn't lend itself to it that well. Uh, so the side charger is definitely available on the Descent. Uh, they're still all direct impingement too. So it's still very AR-ish without going full-blown piston that you would see on the AK too. Oh, nice. And any bonuses to have the, the dual guide rods as opposed to like one big one? Um, I, I think it's just more of a, a, a space savings and stuff. Um, we, we've seen some of the single uh, guide rod systems that just, I, I, don't even, I don't even know if it would necessarily be space savings. It would probably be a little bit more for the fact that it's a little more, more tunable. Um, just for, you, you have two springs that you can actually really fine tune a 7.62 by 39 versus a nine millimeter versus a 5.56. So it just allows for a little bit more, um, again, tunability. I know it sounds like I'm being repetitive, but uh, oh, that's gonna be one of the cases on it. Yeah. <laughs> I was just curious, the pros and cons. Were, yeah. And then when you made what you're calling the compact action, do, do you have to scale it up a lot with each 
caliber or how much are you able to keep the same? Um, most all of it we're actually able to keep the same quite a bit. Um, so I've got my, quite my stack of guns going on here. But um, So I thought that was pretty cool where it looks like you did the main investment of the core design, but then you're able to do so much with it. Yeah, so when you're, when you're looking at it, uh, it is actually, it is all pretty much standard AR-15 bolt carrier group minus the tail. It, it still attaches with a gas key type system that you can see since uh, that's a nine millimeter, so it doesn't actually have the gas key on it. Um, but you would typically see the direct impingement uh, system goes directly into it like you would see on a standard gas key on a DI on it. So it's, it's literally taking the gas key and allowing an attachment point for the recoil system to go on top of the bolt carrier group and just be able to negate that rearward part. But again, that that is pretty much standard bolt carrier stuff, just cut down and adopted for that. Right, on. moving it, moving it up instead of back. Yep. And the nice thing about it, even people have seen us doing this, and they ask us, uh, you know, why did we keep it di? Uh, as opposed to going ahead and going with pistons. We've done pistons before. Um, they just honestly didn't really move the needle for us that much. Uh, and DI, while you are still gonna get a little bit more dirt and carbon and gunk in there, it's actually just a lot smoother recoil system. So it's very smooth operating. Uh, the recoil impulse, no matter what caliber it is, you're not really seeing a, a change uh, as far as like felt recoil. It might have a little bit more of a delay to it. Um, but even in the bigger calibers like the 308 and stuff, it's still a very soft shooting, smooth shooting system. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time to go over so much with us. Hey, I appreciate you stopping by. If you like this video and want to support us, check out the Millspec Monkey Store. Although known for morale patches, we also specialize in a good selection of DIY hardware and tactical accessories.